Welcome back to our study on First and Second Timothy. Uh, today we're going to be in chapter four of the first letter that Paul wrote to Timothy um, as we continue this study. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to read the chapter to you and then kind of pull out some, um, some insight that I see from it. Let's start in chapter four, verse number one. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the later time some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from food that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. We understand that this letter is a letter that was written from a mentor to a mentee. Paul has taken Timothy under his wing and actually charged him with being the pastor of a church that Paul started. Timothy is ministering in Ephesus. And Paul here is essentially giving Timothy the how-tos to become a good minister, how to become a good pastor. And when I read this section of scripture and I, and I think about how it pertains specifically to us as men, I look at it in a sense of, even though we may not work in a church building, we have all been tasked with being pastors of our family. We are ministers to our families. Whether you have kids or don't have kids, if you're just married with no kids or you're married with kids, you are the one who is commanded to lead guide and minister to that family. So what does Paul tell Timothy that could relate to us as being pastor husband, pastor dad? He says this, in the very first part of this fourth chapter, he talks about how people are going to be led away by deceitful spirits through insincere liars and by people who create rules and legalisms that they say are required for righteousness, when in reality there's only one thing that is required for righteousness, and that is faith and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul again is going to go back to something that he said in chapter one, verse number 15, where he repeats that this saying is trustworthy and full of acceptance. Well, what saying is trustworthy and full of acceptance? In chapter one, it was that Christ came to save sinners. 
But in this chapter, in chapter four, he's now taking kind of the application to that trustworthy and accepting message. He says this, if you want to be a good minister, if you want to be a good pastor husband, pastor dad to your family, then do this. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths, but train yourself in godliness. He makes an example. He says bodily training is good, right? We work out. We want to be healthy. We get fit. But he said even more than that, training in godliness is of immense value because it has benefits not only for this life, being a godly man in this life, but also it has training for eternal life. He says the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. He says we toil and we strive after this training in godliness because the reason why we toil and strive, the reason why we go through the aches and the pains of training in godliness is because our hope is set on the living God. If we want to minister well to our families, then we have to set our hope not on the circumstances of this life, but on the living God. He says then if you want to minister well, you need to command and teach these following things. And he lists a bunch of things. He says this, set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to the building up exhortation, and to teaching. It says practice these things and immerse yourselves in them so that you may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on teaching. Protecting doctrine and protecting truth was one of Paul's MOs, one of his main operating tactics, that there's going to be a lot of distractions that come our way. There's going to be a lot of myths and irreverent babble that comes our way. But as ministers, we have to protect truth and we have to minister well to our families through truth. What I think that works well for us is this final kind of warning or kind of command that Paul gives to Timothy in the last verse of chapter four. He listed all the things of how you can minister well, right? You minister well in, in the reading of scripture, in faith, okay? In, in, in speech, in conduct, in love. But he says this, he says, keep a close watch on yourself. Persist in this training in godliness so that you might save yourself and your hearers. Now, your actions are not going to be able to save your family. Let's be very clear on this. Salvation comes only through one mode, and that is through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But by the example that you set, you are a witness and a minister to those who you've been entrusted with. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Train yourself in godliness. I appreciate you all being here. This has been 1 Timothy chapter 4. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that you're updated when we post new content. We are Valor Men's Ministry and we're based out of Beacon Baptist Church in Taylor, Michigan. If you have any questions about what you've heard today or maybe questions about our men's ministry or about our church, please email me at jared at thebeaconbaptist.com or visit our website, thebeaconbaptist.com, for more info. Hope you have a great day. We hope to see you back.